The Ruffed Grouse's Story The ruffed grouse cocked his crested head on one side and looked up through the bare branches to the sky. It was a soft gray, and in the west were banks of bluish clouds. I think it will snow very soon, said he. Mrs. Grouse, are the children all ready for cold weather? All ready, answered his cheerful little wife. They have had their thickest feathers on for quite a while. The rabbits were saying the other day that they had never seen a plumper or better clothed flock than ours. And her beautiful golden brown eyes shone with pride as she spoke. Indeed, the young ruffed grouse were a family of whom she might be well proud. Twelve healthy and obedient children do not fall to the lot of every forest mother, and she wished, with a sad little sigh, that her other two eggs had hatched. She often thought of them with longing. How lovely it would have been to have fourteen children! But at that moment her brood came crowding around her in fright. Some cold white things, they said, came tumbling down upon us and scared us. The white things didn't say a word, but they came so fast that we think they must be alive. Tell us what to do. Must we hide? Why, that is snow, exclaimed their mother. It drops from the clouds up yonder, quite as the leaves drop from the trees in the fall. It will not hurt you, but we must find shelter. What did I tell you, Mrs. Grouse? asked her husband. I was certain that it would snow before night. I felt it in my quills. And Mr. Grouse strutted with importance. It always makes one feel so very knowing when he has told his wife exactly what will happen. How did you feel it in your quills? asked one of his children. Shall I feel it in my quills when I am as old as you are? Perhaps, was the answer, but until you do feel it, you can never understand it, for it is not like any other feeling that there is. Then they all started for a low clump of bushes to find shelter from the storm. Once they were frightened by seeing a great creature come tramping through the woods towards them. A man, said Mr. Grouse, hide, said Mrs. Grouse and each little grouse hid under the leaves so quickly that nobody could see how it was done. One might almost think that a strong wind had blown them away. The mother pretended that she had a broken wing and hopped away, making such pitiful sounds that the man followed to pick her up. When she had led him far from her children, she too made a quick run and hid herself, and although the man hunted everywhere, he could not find a single bird. You know, that is always the way in grouse families, and even if the man's foot had stirred the leaves under which a little one was hiding, the grouse would not have moved nor made a sound. The children are brought up to mind without asking any questions. When their mother says hide, they do it, and never once ask why or answer, as soon as I have swallowed this berry. It is no wonder that the older ones are proud of their children. Any mother would be happy by having one child obey like that, and think of having twelve. At last the whole family reached the bushes where they were to stay, and then they began to feed nearby. Eat all you can, said Mr. Grouse, before the snow gets deep. You may not have another such good chance for many days. So they ate until their little stomachs would not hold one more seed or evergreen bud. All this time the snowflakes were falling, but the grouse children were no longer afraid of them. Sometimes they even chased and snapped at them as they would at a fly in summertime. It was then, too, that they learned to use snowshoes. The oldest child had made a great fuss when he found a fringe of hard points growing around his toes in the fall, and had run peeping to his mother to ask her what was the matter. She had shown him on her own feet, and told him how all the ruffed grouse have snowshoes of that kind grow on their feet every winter. 
We do not have to bother about them at all, said she. They put themselves on when the weather gets cold in the fall, and they take themselves off when the spring comes. We each have a new pair every year, and when they are grown we can walk easily over the soft snow. Without them we should sink through and flounder. When night came, they all huddled under the bushes, lying close to keep each other warm. The next day they burrowed into a snowdrift and made a snug place there, which was even better than the one they had left. The soft white coverlet kept the wind out so well. It was hard for the little ones to keep quiet long, and to amuse them, Mr. Grouse told how he first met their mother in the spring. It was a fine, sunshiny day, he said, and everybody was happy. I had for some time been learning to drum, and now I felt that I was as good as drummer as there was in the forest. So I found a log. Every ruffed grouse has to have his own place, you know. And I jumped up upon it and strutted back and forth with my head high in the air. It was a dusky part of the forest, and I could not see far, yet I knew that a beautiful young grouse was somewhere near, and I hoped that if I drummed very well she might come to me. I know, interrupted one of the little grouse, it was our mother. Well, it wasn't your mother then, my chick, said Mr. Grouse, for that was long, long before you were hatched. She was our mother afterwards, anyway, cried the young grouse. I just know she was. Mr. Grouse's eyes twinkled, but he went gravely on. At last I flapped my wings hard and fast, and the soft drumming sound could be heard far and near. Thump, 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 thump. Thump, 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 rup, 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 rup. I waited, but nobody came. Then I drummed again, and after that I was sure that I heard a rustling in the leaves. I drummed a third time, and then, children, there came the beautiful young grouse, breaking her way through the thicket and trying to look as though she didn't know that I was there. Did she know? cried the little grouse. You must ask your mother that, he answered, for it was she who came. Ah, what happy days we had together all spring! We wandered all through this great forest, and even made some journeys into the edge of the meadow. Still, there was no place we loved as we did the dusky hollow by the old log where we first met. One day your mother told me that she must begin housekeeping, and that I must keep out of her way while she was busy. So I had to go off with a crowd of other ruffed grouse while she fixed her nest, laid her eggs, and hatched out you youngsters. It was rather hard to be driven off in that way, but you know it is the custom among grouse. We poor fellows had to amuse ourselves and each other until our wives called us home to help take care of the children. We've been at work ever since. Oh, said one of the young grouse, oh, I'm so glad you drummed, and that she came when she heard you. Who would we have had to take care of us if you hadn't happened just so? That made them all feel very solemn, and Mr. Grouse couldn't answer, and Mrs. Grouse couldn't answer, and none of the little grouse could answer, because, you see, it is one of the questions that hasn't any answer. Still, they were all there and happy, so they didn't bother their crested heads about it very long.